When wind or seismic forces act on a wood-framed building, the building relies on a system of structural elements to safely channel those loads to the foundation while keeping the structure securely in place. As vertical and lateral loads moves through the system, the final connection between the structure above and the foundation below is provided by anchor bolts. In wood-framed construction, anchor bolts at the sill plate play a critical role in ensuring structural stability by transferring loads from the building to its foundation. Anchor bolts have been the long-standing, prescriptive method for connecting sill plates to foundations in conventional wood-framed residential construction for many generations. They have been specifically referenced in previous and current cycles of the International Residential Code and are widely known by builders. However, it must be said that anchor bolts are not the only connectors for this task. Embedded anchor straps and other proprietary embedded connectors are gaining popularity and have been referenced in recent cycles of the International Residential Code. In this video, we will explore the critical code provisions on anchor bolts including factors such as minimum bolt diameter, minimum bolt embedment, requirements for placement along the sill plate, and the use of washers to distribute loads evenly. By adhering to these standards, builders can ensure that the connection at the sill plate resists shear and uplift forces, safeguarding the structural integrity of the home. Before we look at the code requirements, let us look at the force actions that invite the use of anchor bolts at the sill plate to provide resistance. First, we have out-of-plane forces. These are the horizontal forces that act perpendicular to the direction of the wall. In this category, we have wind forces which develop as a result of wind flow which causes pressure differences between the air outside and the air inside the building. The net pressure may either push the wall outwards or inwards. In addition to wind forces, we also have seismic forces in this category of out-of-plane forces. Seismic forces are inertia forces caused by ground motions that impart displacements and accelerations on building elements. This results in forces within individual building assemblies such as walls which act outwards or inwards and whose magnitude is derived from the imparted acceleration and the weight of the wall. To support the wall against these forces, the wall must be secured to the framing at the roof or upper floor and also at the foundations. Anchor bolts provide the means of securing the wall to the foundations against these out-of-plane shear forces. The next category of forces are known as in-plane forces. These are the horizontal forces that act parallel to the direction of the wall. In this category we have wind forces which act along the length of the wall attempting to slide or rack the wall along its length. In addition to wind forces, we also have seismic forces in this category of in-plane forces. As we said before, seismic forces are inertia forces caused by ground motions that produce lateral displacements and accelerations throughout the building. This results in shear forces within the plane of the wall whose magnitude depends on the imparted acceleration and the weight of the building mass being resisted. To support the wall against these forces, the structure relies on bracing elements such as wood structural panels, diagonal bracing, or other code-approved systems that can resist shear. However, for bracing to be effective, it must be anchored securely to the foundation so that the forces developed in the wall can be transferred safely into the ground. Anchor bolts provide this critical connection by tying the braced wall panels to the foundations, ensuring that the in-plane shear forces resisted by the wall are transferred to the foundations thereby preventing the building from sliding along the top surface of the foundation. Finally, we have uplift forces. These are the vertical forces that act upwards on the structure, opposing the weight of the building. In this category we primarily have wind forces, which flow over and around the roof and create pressure differences that tend to lift the roof assembly away from the walls. The net effect of uplift is to attempt to separate the structure above from the supporting foundations below. To resist this action, the roof framing must be securely tied to the walls, and the walls must be anchored to the foundations. Anchor bolts provide the direct means of securing the bottom of the wall to the foundations, ensuring that uplift forces are safely resisted and that the structure remains firmly in place. 
The requirements for the attachment of the sill plate to the foundations are provided in section R403.1.6 and R602.11.1 of the International Residential Code. These sections are applicable to structures supported on monolithic slabs and continuous foundations. Section R403.1.6 provides the general minimum requirements for the installation of anchor bolts. On the other hand, Section R602.11.1 provides the requirements for the installation of anchor bolts along braced wall lines with specific requirements for plate washers in moderate to high seismic areas. When discussing the prescriptive anchor bolt requirements in the International Residential Code, it is important to know that there are slight differences in the requirements based on whether the application is in a high seismic area or a moderate to low seismic area. High seismic areas include seismic design category D0, D1, and D2. Low seismic areas include seismic design category A and B, while seismic design category C may be considered a moderate seismic area. First, we have the general requirements that are applicable to all structures within the scope of the IRC and then we have much more strict requirements introduced on some parameters and elements for all structures in high seismic areas and townhouses in seismic design category C. According to section R403.1.6, anchor bolts must be at least one half inch in diameter with a minimum embedment of seven inches into concrete or grouted masonry cells and shall be placed in the middle third of the sill plates cross section the code requires that a nut and washer shall be tightened at the anchor bolt for walls that are not provided along braced wall lines standard washers are permitted to be used standard washers are washers that are intended for general use in applications with bolts and nuts they are circular in shape and have a bolt hole that is 1 16th inch larger than the diameter of the bolt. Residential structures that are braced according to the requirements in the International Residential Code will typically be required to have all exterior wall lines as braced wall lines to ensure the roof diaphragm is supported on all four sides. For exterior walls, the bolts shall be spaced at no more than 6 feet on center. Similarly, for interior braced wall panels, the bolts shall also be spaced at no more than 6 feet on center. For interior bearing sole plates on monolithic slab foundations that are not part of a braced wall panel, the code requires the sill plate to be positively anchored with approved anchors. This means that the designer can specify anchor bolts that are applicable to braced walls or use anchors that have been approved by the building official. Building officials will typically allow anchors with valid code evaluation reports showing that the anchors have been evaluated for use in such applications. Still on section R403.1.6 of the IRC, the code also specifies that there shall be no less than two anchor bolts per plate section. Additionally, the code specifies that one bolt must be located no more than 12 inches or be less than seven bolt diameters from the end of the plate section. For cases where a wall segment connecting offset braced wall panels is 24 inches or shorter in length, the code permits the use of one anchor bolt in the center third of the plate section under certain conditions. For wall segments connecting offset braced walls that are 12 inches or shorter in length, the code does not require any anchor bolts. Section R403.1.6 also provides installation guidelines for the placement of anchor bolts. The code allows the placement of anchor bolts while concrete is still plastic before it has set. This means that builders are allowed to pour the foundations and then come back and place the anchors into the foundations while concrete is still soft and workable, before initial set has occurred. The code specifies that concrete shall be consolidated using vibration mechanisms where anchor bolts resist placement or the consolidation of concrete around the anchor bolt is impeded. Vibration is intended to ensure full contact between the anchor bolts and the concrete. The anchor bolt spacing requirements that we have looked at apply to all buildings covered by the International Residential Code. However, as we mentioned, the code introduces more strict requirements on some parameters and elements for all applicable residential structures in high seismic areas and townhouses in seismic design category C. First, 
According to section R602.11 and R403.1.6.1, the code requires plate washers at the sill plates along braced wall lines for all buildings including townhouses in seismic design category D0, D1 and D2 and townhouses in seismic design category C. Plate washers are 3 inch by 3 inch square washers that are 0.229 inches thick. It is important to note that according to the language of the code in section R602.11, plate washers are not just required at the braced wall panels but along braced wall lines. This is also emphasized in section R403.1.6.1 which specifies that the plate washers are required along the full length of the braced wall line. This means that all wall segments along a braced wall line must have plate washers. According to the code in section R403.1.6.1, bottom plates at interior braced walls shall have anchor bolts spaced at no more than 6 feet on center and located within 12 inches of the end of each plate section. It is important to note that these requirements are for cases where walls are supported on continuous foundations and will not apply to first-story interior walls supported on wood-framed raised floors. Such framing systems have specific framing requirements intended to address load path from the interior braced walls to exterior cripple walls. Just like interior braced walls, bottom plates at interior bearing walls supported on continuous foundations shall have anchor bolts spaced at no more than 6 feet on center and located within 12 inches of the end of each plate section. Finally, for buildings over two stories in height in seismic design category C, D0, D1 and D2. The spacing of anchor bolts at the sill plate should not exceed 4 feet. Anchor bolts are part of a larger system of structural elements intended to resist force by providing load path from the structure to the foundations. If you would like a holistic training on conventional structural framing from the roof to the foundations, then please check out our comprehensive residential wood framing design series at www.conventionalframing.com. You do not need to be a licensed engineer or architect to complete the structural design of one or two family dwellings in nearly all states in the United States. This course series equips you with the knowledge to become an astute structural designer through four focused modules which include the conventional roof framing module, floor and deck framing module, wall and foundation design module, and wall bracing module. Please check out www.conventionalframing.com. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more insights into wood framing.